Hey, what's up, everybody? Sorry, we are a little late. One second. Had a little technical difficulties. The, the mixer had a little firmware update that it had to do, uh, and I couldn't hear myself in the headphones. So we had to do a little technical uh, work up here, but I think, we're all, I think we're good. I think we're running. All right, and I found out how to make my chat bigger, so this is, this is good. This is helpful. All right, we got Ruben says, uh, Dommies, 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 Dommies Unite. We are ready for another episode of Web Design for Dommies. It is Wednesday, February 22nd, 11.03 a.m. sharp. All right, we got Amanda's here. Um, Amanda here. Alexander. Tony is here in the house. Sylvia, Brian, John, hello. Justin, hello. Justin says, it must be past midnight on a Wednesday in Western Australia because here we all are. Let me position this a little bit better. Should these be at the bottom? Should they, should, oh, should they be in the center? Where should they be? Uh, maybe there. Uh, maybe down here. I wish it gave me a guide on where the center is. That'd be nice, you know? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's put another one up. Good morning from Georgia. What's up, Robert? Must be nearby in my backyard. David's here. Randall's here. Arnold's here. We got really good. We got a really good showing today. Let me, we're about to pull up the uh, first website. We're going to dive right in today. But first, what I wanted to do is overlays, preferences, scenes. Man, I feel like I'm all discombobulated because of the, the firmware update and getting technical difficulties out of the way. All right, here we go. All right, we're good. I got all the screens that I need to get. I've got three potential websites that we're going to do today. We may only get to two of them, uh, but I have three just in case. By the way, I just wanted to let you guys know, I, I cleared the list. I pulled, I think, one of these websites from the old list, but I, I basically cleared out the old list and I started a new list because we have a new form at geary.co uh, for doing this. The link is down below in the description. So if you want your website critiqued on Web Design for Dummies, you need to go submit it there. Now, I will say, we had a lot in the old list. We had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of not English websites. And that's fine. I mean, we can do them uh, if they're worth doing, right? Not every website's worth doing. Like, I review, I look at it, like, briefly ahead of time, and I'm like, eh. Uh, but if it's worth doing, then, then we'll do it. But the thing is, is when it's not an English website, I've got to use this auto translator for in Chrome and we can't really take a look at the copy all that much because I don't know if it says what you intended for it to say. So it is really better for everybody if you submit an, an, a website that is in the English language. Um, so just keep that in mind. I mean, if you've got one that's not English, but you feel like it would be a really, really, really good one to do anyway, then we'll, we'll probably do it. But if you have English websites, that is better for everyone. All right, if you have a question at any point during, let's just do a quick recap of what we're doing here. We're doing deep dive website critiques. We're looking at everything that makes a website successful. That's from you know traditional design critiques all the way down to copywriting, offer analysis, conversion flow. Uh, of course, UX, we open the DOM. That's the whole point of web design for dummies in a lot of cases. We take a look at accessibility. We take a look at best practices, maintainability. Are you using classes correctly? Or are you being a chump? Are you styling at the ID level? Are you littering utility classes everywhere? I posted a meme about uh, ID styling and utility class. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get my meme game up, okay? I'm, I'm going to start playing around with, uh, just, I don't know. I like, I like doing the meme thing a little bit. Um, so more, more memes coming your way from me posted a, a good one in the, uh, ACSS group the other day. All right, let's see what Bradbury's saying. Uh, I've had, I've had to test QA a number of non-English websites in the past. It's definitely more difficult when it isn't your first language. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, okay. Yeah. So I was, I was, I was saying what we're doing here, uh, and then you can make sure you get your website submitted for critique if you want it critiqued. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, let's go let's go ahead and get the first one rocking and rolling. All right, so we are going to. By the way, you know, I I mentioned this a couple episodes ago where I was gonna, if it allows, like if there's a good opportunity for us to go down a little mini tutorial rabbit hole on something, I wanted to do that. And I don't think we did it the last episode, but maybe maybe we'll get to it this episode. We'll see. I kind of forgot about that the last episode. Okay. 
Uh, let's go ahead and share our screen, which right now is nothing. Let's bring on the first website. Let's make sure that you guys can see this website. Oh, I was going to talk about participation. If you have a question at any point during a critique, put question in all caps, and then go ahead and ask your question after that. Makes it easy for me to find in the chat. But also keep in mind that as we're rolling through a critique, drop your own critique comments in the comments in the chat. Uh, you're, it's this is I, I like to come back to the chat every now and then and see what other people are saying about the site that we're taking a look at. It's not just me. Um, you you guys need to participate as well in the chat. A lot of you are really good about that, but just a reminder to keep keep that chat working uh, as we go through these websites. But this first one is Cali Capelli, I believe. Uh, CaliCapelli.com. And we're going to do the no scroll test. Everybody knows what that is. Ooh, oh, I have another good announcement in just a second. We'll, we'll, we'll get going on this a little bit, and then we'll, then we'll get back to it. Um, no scroll test is basically, can I figure out what's going on here? What, what is this website? Who is it for? What are they offering in general without scrolling around, without digging? I don't want to have to dig. Users don't want to have to dig. So can you figure it out without scrolling around? Uh, and by the way, when I do the no scroll test, if I'm doing the no scroll test on your website, I have a very large monitor. So there is more real estate for me to figure out what is going on. It's not the case for every user. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's a little bit of a cheating when you when we do it here on Web Design for Dummies because I have a very large screen. But what I can see here right off the bat is that uh, we are selling flat irons and curlers uh, for thick, coarse, or curly hair. Uh, and I don't know anything about uh, hair curling. Obvi Hold on. Let me show you guys. I don't do much hair curling uh, these days. So I'm not, this is not my expertise, but we're going to rock and roll through this and see what we've got. First of all, we're going to see what this is built in. And it is oxygen. Okay, so we have an oxygen website that is selling flat, iron, flat irons and curlers. What do we know about this headline right off the bat? We have gone the route of very, very um, just specific. It's like, let's just, here it is. So let's, we're not going to talk about features. We're not going to talk about benefits. We're not going to do any, well, down here we do just a little bit, right? We kind of uh, bucket the person here as we, as we talk about often. Uh, by by kind of calling out, hey, do you have thick hair? Do you have coarse hair? Do you have curly hair? These flat irons and curlers will work for you. But the headline itself, I think, can be dramatically improved because, well, I mean, I can see what the product is just by the photos. So if you just explicitly, we'll just call this an explicit headline. If you are very, very explicit in your headline, I think you miss an opportunity for other things. You miss an opportunity to really speak to the person that you are trying to sell to. Uh, because if if all you have to say about this, like remember the headline is the most important thing on the page. So you're telling me the most important thing that I need to know right now is that this is just a flat iron and curler. That That's what this is, that's what we're selling here. Um, there's nothing special about it. It's just a flat iron and a curler. I don't know, is there anything special about it? You haven't told me anything that's special about it. You've just told me explicitly what it is. And that's why I say, I think this is a wasted opportunity with the headline. Um, the other thing that I'm wondering right off the bat, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm about to hover over shop right here and see really what's going on here. But I'm wondering, is this a hero section? Because e-commerce sites are kind of notorious for this, where you arrive on the homepage and Kudos to you that this is not a slider, okay? <laughs> Most people would put a slider here and it would be trying to call out different products and things like that. Now, this is not a slider. It's just a normal static hero section, but it does call out one specific product. And so the question I have is, is this the only product or the main product or is this just one product that you've chosen at random to put as like a display on the homepage? Now, I'm seeing it right here as well in this section below. And so I'm gathering that maybe this is like the premier product or perhaps even the only product that you are selling. Uh, but that's going to come into play. I mean, I get that there's, you know, additional colors. Um yeah, and so okay. Yeah, so good. We're going we're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about as we go down this page here. 
But I think right off the bat, I would say we've wasted a headline opportunity here. So get your get your gears moving in terms of what else, what can I say here differently uh, so I'm not wasting this opportunity. And then I, I think what you can do here is you're wasting an opportunity where you have a lead paragraph and you're not really, you you used it well to call out this thing, but you have more words available to you. You have more, you can th say more things here. There's more space here. This is not a giant hero section. Um, you can drop the uh, text size just a little bit right here and you can just say more things and you can, you can pack a little bit more value into this lead paragraph. I'm also with the CTA. Um, if this is the only product slash premier product, uh, this may want to, you may want to say buy now here instead of shop now. Let's click shop now because that's the main call to action you suggested we take. So let's, before we do the rest of the homepage, let's just click this and see, get a little bit more context of what's going on here. And I'm having a little bit of a, uh, it's, it's, it's taking a while here. Let me click it again. Is that what we're supposed to do when it doesn't work the first, do we just click it 700 more times? Um, okay, here we go. Hair strengtheners. This hero right off the bat, I'll tell you, does not work. Get rid, Scrap this hero immediately because um, you can see what's going on. This is the classic, hey, I'm just going to take what should be actual text on top of an image and I'm going to make it all one image and then I'm going to make it a background image in the section. And then you see um, where it probably worked at the screen you added it on. There, There's the screen size you probably designed it at right there. But any other screen size, eh, here we go. There you go. So that is a, yeah, that's a no go uh, in hero land. So remove this immediately. This 450 degrees salon height heat floating 3D titanium. Let's, let's go back to a size we can read all this stuff at. These, these call outs need to exist on the page somewhere as real text. Right? These are feature blurbs right here for sure, 100%. Uh, but because you've stuffed them into a hero background image, mm, this is just not, um, this hero, now I'm not saying this about your entire website, okay? And we'll talk about the colors in just a second. But, uh, I'm not saying this about your entire website, so don't get all up in your, in, your, in your feels. But this hero section right here is what we would refer to as amateur hour. This is the... Uh, the beginners of the world would immediately go to this strategy right here. Let's create an image in Photoshop and then let's, you know, that kind of has the design the way we want, has the layout the way we want, and then let's stuff it into a background image and a hero section and call it a day. That is the, um, not this whole thing, scrap this whole hero, okay? Um, all right, let's keep moving down the page. So in e-commerce land, this kind of, this is tough. This kind of, uh, this is this is not just this site that does this. This is a lot of sites that have basically a premier product, okay? That's what I'm getting at. This is a premier product. It's like it's like one product. Um, there may be other things. Like I saw a scrunchie set up here. There's like accessories and stuff, which are not on the um, shop page, by the way. Okay, I don't, we're, I think we're just having a loading issue. I'll come back to this page in just a second. It's loading very slowly. Uh, but here, here's my main thing, right? Yeah, there's your categories. So you have one product, but you're displaying it as like 17 products, right? It's like, I don't need every color variation as its own product listing, more or less. Um, the only thing I see different, well, the leopard is a different price. Uh, well, no, it's not. These are just on sale. So what is this? The leopard is not on sale. And then the, the random colors are on different sales, Prices, they're all the same thing, right? Though it's Pro Series One Inch Flat Iron. That's the that's the thing, and the only difference is the color. So this does not need to be represented as all these different products. And I think what happens is somebody gets like an e-commerce theme, and the theme is like, oh, it's an e-commerce site. You're supposed to have a bunch of products, and so they're like, but I only have one product, and it's like, oh, I'll just make every variation a product. And then, you know, you fill out the theme, you fill out the grid, but this does nothing for the user. And if so, and it probably does nothing for your sales either. So what I would recommend is that, you know, we go back to the homepage and let's reimagine this. This is actually more of in line of what we should be doing right here, not this section right here. 
Um, accessories is fine to display like this. What I would do with this product slash site is I would make it like a sales page designed to sell this product. And then if somebody wants to buy the product, when they're checking out, they choose their color because that doesn't really matter all that much. Um, it, like, it's not like they're, cho they're choosing the pro series two inch or the, or a, a different series or anything like that. They're, they're choosing the same product. It's just a different color. So get them to buy the product, sell them on buying the product. And, um, you know, then they can choose the incidentals at, at checkout. And what you've done here by creating all of these product grids for products that aren't really additional products or separate products is you're wasting space. You're wasting opportunities to sell the product, right? Um, you're, you're, you know, hoping that these grids, people are just going to be, oh, okay, yeah, I'll add it to cart. Why this curler versus a different curler? Have we gotten to that yet? Now, let's take a look at this right here, because this is the only thing on this page that kind of looks like a sales section to me, like a section that's really making an effort at selling other than, I should correct myself, other than this hero right here with these call outs. This is what I'm really looking for. The main question that people are going to have when they arrive on a site that's selling hair curlers is why this hair curler versus the gazillion other hair curlers I could possibly buy. You have to answer that question. If you don't answer that question, there's no reason for the person to buy. There's no reason for anything that we're doing here. You can't just say, well, it's just another hair curler and it's got cool colors. Do you want it? No, I, I, I don't really want it, okay? Um, I'd rather buy from a reputable company. I'm not saying you're not reputable, but I don't know you. And in marketing and sales, no like trust are three kind of critical components to getting people to buy things. And so if you just come out with a, here's another hair curler from an, uh, a brand that nobody knows, likes, or trusts, then you're just gonna be sitting around going, where are my sales? And we're like, well, you didn't sell them. And you, then nobody knows you, likes you, or trusts you. So not surprising that you don't have any sales. Not saying you don't have any sales. I'm just trying to uh, explain the main thing that's missing here. The main thing that's missing is why this one versus all the others? So let's take a look at this section right here because I think this attempts to answer that question. And so we're going to see Pro Series 1. Is that a, that's not an inch. Uh, flat iron. Okay. Uh, so three in one. Let's click this and see what happens. Flip, curl, and style. Round body shape design allows unique flips and curling styles. And I'll tell you the other main thing that is missing from this website in just a minute. If you can guess it, I mean, maybe it's here somewhere, but if you can guess, go ahead and guess in the uh, in the comments. What have we not seen yet that's probably insanely critical for selling this hair curler? Uh, flip curl and style round body shape design allows unique flips and curling styles. All right, you hair curling experts out there, is this a thing? Does this matter? Does this rounded design, is that some sort of um, magic that you can do magic flips and curls uh, because of its rounded design? Got to let me know. I don't know anything about hair curling. Um, is this one of those features? Like, here's my selling point that's not really a selling point. Is that what's going on here? Or is that a legit thing? You got to let me know in the comments because I don't know anything about hair curling. But what I often see is here's my unique selling point, And then there's nothing unique about it. It's, it's just a selling point that everybody else says. Um, so I'm always looking for that. It's called a USP, unique selling position, right? What is that? What is unique about it? All right, sleek design. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on now. Three in one, flip, curl, and style. You're talking about the round body shape design. And then the next point is a sleek design. And now, all right, so now we're talking about ergonomic soft touch design. All right, gorgeous array of colors, pink. Per th this um, does not seem to follow this. You're talking about ergonomic soft touch, but then you're talking about colors. So these two things, this copy does not jive. There's a disconnect here. Just like you talked about the round body shape design under flip, curl, and style, but then you also talked about design over here again with this bullet point. It's a little confusing. It's a little disjointed. Our copy needs to be more cohesive in this section right here. Let's go to temperature. Adjustable temperature. Pro Series Flatiron has rose gold titanium plates, and they heat up to... 450 degrees and glide through hair with no snagging. 
All right, so we need to know things like 450 degrees. Is this standard? Is this different? Is there something unique about it? Um, rose gold titanium plates. That sounds like bull to me. Um, I don't think that there's, I think that's just fancy sounding language. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that that, yeah, maybe it's like, I see the plate right there. Okay, it's pretty. I don't know that that matters to curling hair though. Doesn't sound like, I have a bull radar and it's going off when I when I read that, okay? Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Uh, glide through hair with no snagging. Okay, let's let's go to plates. See, here's the thing again. Like, we're talking about the plates here under temperature, but then there's another bullet for plates. Floating with rounded edges, auto-adjust to your hair thickness and type. Okay, I'm not sure. T tell me in the, uh, tell me all of you hair curls. We've got a lot of males in the comments, and uh, so I don't know how much we're going to be talking about the logistics of hair curlers here. Uh, just going straight to the Dom, okay. Uh, where's the price delivery options? I have long hair and they all have something similar, okay? One foot flat iron. Yeah, that that's yeah, that's a foot symbol right there. Wait a minute. Is that a hold on. This whole thing an image? Come on now. Okay. All right. This should not all be an image right here. Um, inspect. It is. The whole thing's an image. Okay. So what we need here is this thing needs to be an image, okay? The uh, tool, the product. The product needs to be the image. And then this needs to be actual text right here. Um, so this is another, ex here's, the, here's why people do this, I think. I think they aren't sure how to structure this layout. And so to them, the easiest way is to just make it in Photoshop and then add the image here. Why is this a bad thing? Number one, obviously, is that you lose the text. There is this section of content now has no heading whatsoever. Um, it has no readable content other than what's in these pop ups, which I'm going to guess is oxy extras. Um, uh, what are they called? Ah, forgot what they're called. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, no, not, it's not a, a map. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's escaping my brain. But that's Oxy Extras. I'm almost positive that's Oxy Extras. This is the only content in here that's scannable and readable. Uh, this is not readable by by you know screen readers, by Google, by nothing. So you're losing SEO value here. You're losing accessibility value here. You're losing a lot of value here. Uh, so this needs to be a separate image. This needs to be a legit heading. This needs to be legit text. And then you can still position these things around the image. Um, Okay, so this was the section that attempted to sell me on the hair curler. I'm not sold on the, even though I don't need a hair curler. I'm not, even if I had thick, here we go, thick, coarse, or curly hair, uh, I would not be buying this yet because I haven't really been sold on why this is the one to go with. This is a waste of opportunity right here um, because you're like, hey, I know I haven't sold you on this yet, really, but here's four of them. And they're all the same, but they're different colors. So just go ahead and add one to cart. That's kind of what this is saying. And it's not, um, it's it's just, we, we haven't gotten there yet. So here's a section that attempts to sell once again. And so we have a, a good photo, but it's obviously a stock photo. And I can't see a lot of her. And so we're going to take a look at this again. See, this is what it probably looked like on a screen you were designing. And you were like, oh, but I can see more of her now. But on my screen, not nah, it's very close up. Uh, but if we look at the heading here, it's, you know, there's no value, no sales value in the heading. There's no sales value in the lead. And this is, but we'll pause here because this is a really, really good copywriting thing. And it's a mistake that a lot of people make. This is a feature Okay, the diff knowing the difference between features and benefits and how to write and talk about features and benefits. And one of the key things that I always try to do and that I look for in copy is it's okay to state a feature. You should be very careful when you're stating a feature to make sure that you also include that feature's benefit because the reader may not understand why that feature matters. OK, and you know who's notorious for this, even if you go to, um, you know, take take somebody who doesn't know a lot about computers. Right. 
And so uh, they'll compare three different computers on a website. And it'll be like uh, eight gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM. And that's a mistake in my opinion. That's a mistake if you're trying to sell computers to tell people the amount of RAM without telling them why that matters. You're telling them a feature, but what is the benefit of 16 gig of RAM versus eight gig of RAM? What is the benefit of 32 gig of RAM versus 16 gig of RAM? Yes, you can sell to people who already know the answers to these things, but a lot of times we're trying to sell to anyone who might be interested in buying this computer. And that includes people who may not understand the benefit of a certain amount of RAM or the benefit of a certain processor speed. or the, So you would create a mistake to just say, here are the features, here are all the features, and then not tell anybody why any of that stuff matters. And that's really what's going on here. And you see, you see this on all different kinds of websites where people are obsessed with talking about features, but they never wrap it up with what is the benefit of that feature. That is a drastic mistake. And here's why they do it. Because in their head, they already know the benefit of the feature and they make this wild assumption that everybody knows the benefit of the feature because they do. And it's the mistake of the person writing the copy, right? You, you've got to make sure you put yourself in the buyer's shoes and say, hey, what does, why does up to 450 degrees matter? Why does the number 450 matter, much less the up to 450 degrees? Someone like me, now here's the thing. You're like, Kevin, they're not selling to you. You don't have any hair. Well, they're not selling to me. Are you sure? Because I know people with hair. And so if I was buying this as a gift, I can't make a decision. If I'm like, hey, I want to buy my wife this hair curler or a hair curler. And so I come here and I'm like, you know, please tell me, what, why should I buy this one? And they're like, well, it's extra hot up to 450 degrees. For all I know, that's going to set her hair on fire. I don't know why this is important. So you've got to give the extra context. So yeah, I'm not your target market necessarily, but I'm buying for your target market. And so it would really help. Does it, does it harm you to provide benefits when you talk about features? Absolutely not. So it's one of those things where there's no downside to telling people what the benefit of your features is. So go the extra step of clarifying, hey, here's the feature that we want to talk about and here's the benefit of that feature, that makes your copy instantly twice as good, I would say. You can see here that there's really no value in, in this copy when we talk about features without the context of how I benefit from these features. So this is a section right here that needs to be reworked in terms of, of copy. And then we get down into hair accessories, which is fine. Okay, these are, you know, these are not the main thing, so whatever. Uh, we got a couple selling points related to e-commerce, lifetime warranty, free shipping, free 30-day returns. Tell me right now, what's the, what's the problem with this, really? Um, I mean, I say problem. I'll just, I'll, just go ahead and, I'll just go ahead and tell you. It's just another wasted, like, put this down here somewhere in the footer. You still haven't sold the thing yet. We haven't sold the thing yet. And basically what you're saying is, everything every other e-commerce website says. Every single, I pull up any e-commerce website. It's gonna say something about free shipping somewhere. It's gonna, if you spend over $40, free shipping. If you do this, free shipping. Okay, and then there's gonna be a return policy there. It might not be 30 days, it might be 20 days, it might be 14 days, it might be 60 days. It doesn't, but there's gonna be a return policy. These are just policies, right? They're not selling the product. They're not helping people in any way. If somebody's like, you know what, before I buy this, I really wanna I really wanna see what their return policy is and what the shipping is like. Okay, they're gonna scroll down here and look for it. So you don't need to waste the space right here unless you're telling them something very, very important. Like lifetime warranty is a good one probably, but you know all this other stuff is incidental. Um, you've got some as seen on logos here and I'm, I'm really wondering, are, have they actually been seen on here? And if they have, if they have, like uh, if you were on um, Teen Vogue or USA Today or NBC, pop a video in here. Show me the segment, right? Way better than just telling me that you were in these places. I mean, show me, show me a, a call out to one of these things. That's going to lend a lot of legitimacy. And now I'm now I would be a little bit more intrigued. And that kind of alludes to the main thing that's missing that I talked about earlier when I asked, what is the main thing that is missing here that we need? 
Uh, let me see if anybody put it. No, nope. somebody put. No, no, those were not tool tips. Um, okay, did anybody hit on it? Anybody? <laughs> Bradbury Robinson says this is a proper Geary grilling. He's had his coffee today. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Anybody? 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 Hit on it. Okay. Uh, video, video. Get me like some TikTok style. You know, like somebody showing me this amazing hair curler. Like you talk about. Right here, um, body shape design allows unique flips and curling styles. Show me some unique flips and curling styles, okay? Get me somebody on video right here using this thing so that I can see it in action. And then you have the ability to obviously talk about the features and the benefits as they're doing these unique flips and curls. And hey, 450 degrees, here's why that matters. You get a lot of value in 30 seconds, 60 seconds. In a little TikTok kind of style snippet video, you can get a lot of value that can absolutely make the difference, right? Um, so that's what's missing. The main thing missing here is, is the video. All right, let's ho let's hop up here to shop. Then we're going to take a look at the Dom. And here's here's again. Here's this problem. We're just going to revisit this problem. There's one product on this website basically. And then there's a couple add-ons. But there's one product. It looks like there's 100 things going on here, right? Shop by benefit and type. I don't even know how this is going to work with one product. So I'm going to click on curls and waves. There's all the same products. Hey, guess what, guys? The one product that's here are also best sellers. Uh, so you see how we're, wa we're just wasting space, kind of filling in a template, basically, is kind of the vibe that I'm getting here. But then I click on straightening. Let's see what happens. Is this a different product? It's not going to be a different product. It can't be a different product because I haven't seen any different products. It's still loading. Uh, let me do it in a different tab, maybe. Oh, jeez. Oh, see, this is the problem with Mega Menus. I can't. I I got some real problems with mega menus. Um, they go away sometimes when I'm, okay. Okay. What are we doing? What are we doing? See that? I'm trying to get over there and it's bringing me into the hair care mega. Come on now. Come on. Let's go slow. Let's move slowly. Be deliberate. This is not what normal users are going to do. They're just going to get frustrated and leave. Okay. So straightening hair straighteners. Hey, all the same products. Hair care, shop, oh, shop. See what the menu's doing to me? Oh, come on. All right, very slow and deliberate. Very slow and, okay, we're going over here. Um, so curls and waves and straightening all lead to the exact same place. All accessories are going to obviously go to the accessory space. Shop all is probably gonna come to the page I'm already, one of the pages I'm already looking at. Um, so that's all wasted. This is just adding confusion for the no benefit whatsoever. Zero benefit. Uh, and then all these tools over here are, are the same product. This mega menu needs to get scrapped immediately. It's all it's doing is confusing people and frustrating people. Um, let's take a look at the blog real quick. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's see. How to, hair tips, all posts. All right. Let's see. Six flat iron mistakes you may be making and how to avoid them. Okay. This is interesting. Um, I, I have a uh, a prediction, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off in just a second. So let's see. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go to Hrefs right quick. I said in the last one we would do. We didn't get to really any SEO stuff going on in the last episode, so we're gonna do that in this one. So what we're looking at here is flat. All right, actually, uh, let me do this. Let me do this. Um, what is the target keyword of this heading? Let's go ahead and we'll go to the chat. Let everybody put, there you go, Brian. Hot spots. Thank you. My gosh. Hot spots. My brain was not finding that word. It was searching high and low. Was not finding it. Thank you. Um, what's, what's the target keyword of this heading right here? Can anybody suss it out? Simone says, it's a little bit chaotic, too many things, and not a real focus on the product. Yes. It feels like if I had to sum this site up, it was let's fill out the template, right? But let's forget we forgot to sell the product uh, along the way. Um, love the idea of the video, super powerful. Yep. All right. I know people with hair. Kevin Geary, February 2023. Yes. Uh, let's see. 
I usually wait for the first show me your Dom before I hit the like, but good reminder. Well, the, the show me your Dom is coming, 100%, because I've seen some stuff on the homepage that I'm, I'm curious about. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Flat iron mistakes, I guess. Or flat iron, another flat iron mistakes from Ruben. Justin says flat iron mistakes. Brian says flat iron mistakes. Yes, flat iron mistakes is the target keyword here. So we're going to go to Ahrefs and we're going to go flat iron mistakes. And I'll tell you in just a second off the bat, we'll see, we'll see what happens here. Okay, so first of all, nothing nada. Okay, nothing nada. Uh, matching terms, flat iron mistakes, starting from bottom flat iron mistakes. Okay. So what we're going to do is take out the word mistakes and we're going to see, just, just show me matching terms related to flat. And there you go. Right off the bat. I was like, it's going to be something about flat iron stakes. So now we're, we're like, Hey, I got this great idea for a blog post of, of flat iron mistakes related to hair curlers, which flat iron mistakes could also be related to grilling. Um, and then, so these are obviously two different things. Now, look at this. You do find some related to curling hair, how to curl hair with a flat iron. So we're going to go to the blog. Our, let's see if the blog is in. Okay, it's not in a slug. So makes it a little bit harder. Um, but here, here's our keyword, how to curl hair. So we're going to go take this domain. We're going to go to site. We're going to pop the site in. How curl hair, something like that. Okay. So we are, um, let's talk about SEO now. We've just done a quick test. I, I spent eight seconds um, putting one term in called Flatiron, and it took me that eight seconds to come across a very valuable, it seems, target keyword of how to curl hair with a flat iron. Something that you would think would be extremely important to selling this product right here uh, could garner a lot of traffic. And in that blog post of, hey, here's how you curl, by the way, with a video, this would obviously be on YouTube as well. So you create a video, how to curl hair with a flat iron. You're using this flat iron right here. And while you're teaching people how to curl hair with a flat iron, you are giving the features and benefits of this particular hair curler that people may want to use, okay? And so you're now selling the product. Well, it turns out that that keyword that we found in eight seconds is nowhere to be found on this website, uh, according to Google. So, uh, you know, we're searching the website for how, curl, how to curl hair, and we're just not finding, there's no articles, there's no videos. So there's a missing thing. So right there, immediate value, you can go target this keyword, you can create a blog post plus a video, and you can go throw your, your hand in the, in the ring here, try to rank for this term. Um, then you get best flat iron. Would this be a good target keyword to go after, yes or no? Go ahead and drop this in the uh, chat. Do you think this is a good target keyword to go after, yes, no, why? Um, let's keep going down. So here's a flat iron steak recipe. Anybody hungry? Um, how, to, how to curl your hair with a flat iron. That's the exact one as up here. A lot of how to curl hair with a flat iron, um, which is why, let's see. How to curl hair with a flat iron. Traffic potential, 26,000. Very, very strong there. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. So these are also called curling irons, right? Aren't they called curling irons? Now we're going to do a little keyword comparison. We'll go to the overview between these two. Okay, so the volume is very similar, but notice the difficulty, which means there's more um, higher authority websites targeting curling iron. Now, I don't know, maybe curling iron is not, maybe a flat iron is a type of curling iron, but maybe not all curling irons are flat irons. That could be, that could definitely be a thing. Um, somebody, somebody would have to... Uh, clarify that for me to know whether it's worth pursuing curling iron terms because that may not be relevant to flat irons. I don't know. Um, okay. Let's hop back to the website here. So let's show me your Dom. What's well, time. It's time for show me hair straighteners. Got it. Okay, good. Perfect. 
All right, so let's go with um, hair straightener. Straightener. Let's make sure we spell correctly. That always helps in, in the SEO game. Um, hair, let's just do hair straightener matching terms and see what we get. Okay, best hair straightener. Dyson hair straightener, dang. Okay, I don't know. That's scary. That's kind of scary. Um, a lot of brand queries here, it seems like. Timo, Timo, how to curl your hair with a straightener. And notice that the, look at this, look at this. How to curl, let me zoom in a little bit. So the how to curl your hair with a straightener, Ahrefs says you're going to rank for this if you rank for how to curl hair with a flat iron. So that's the parent term of that target term. Hair straightener, hair straightener, best hair straightener for thick hair. We've, we just found ourselves a long tail variation that 100% matches the product that we are trying to sell right here. Didn't we talk about thick, coarse, or curly hair? And now it's best hair straightener for thick hair? My gosh. Target, bam, put it on the list. You need to be making a video. You need to be making a blog post, 100% right here. Um, we could keep doing this all day, right? Cordless hair straightener. Is this cordless? Oh, is that a cord I see? Okay. So that's not a selling, that's not a unique selling point. Uh, anything else? Anything? You see another one? Best, th best straightener for thick hair. Um, I would a hundred percent do a best hair straighteners of 2023. And I, I would list your competitors. I would list the top 10. I'd make yours up there, you know, in the top three somewhere and use this to, as a, here, here's all the curlers that we think are great. Here's all the hair straighteners, whatever we want to call them. All the ones that I, that I think are great. Here's why ours is better. And a lot of people won't do this because they're like, we don't want to send traffic to our competition. And all, what I say is the same thing every time. I'm like, that doesn't really make any sense somebody's going to write this article. In fact, lots of people are going to write this article. So the question is, do you want to just not be in the conversation? Because if you don't write the article, you're just not in the conversation. If you write the article and rank for it, you're now controlling the conversation. Even though, yes, you have to talk about your competitors, potentially send traffic to your competitors, at least you're in the conversation now. You weren't in it before. If you don't write that article, you're not in the conversation. So get in the conversation. Write the article. Talk about your competition. Talk about their pros. Talk about their cons. Be objective. Perhaps send traffic to them, but you're listed also, and you're going to get buyers that you otherwise would not have gotten. So I'd be doing a, a, a 10 best hair straighteners for 2023 article. A lot of stuff to, to do here in terms of opportunities. Okay. Let's show me your dom. We said we were going to get to that. So we are going to inspect something such as uh, this right here, this product. Now, these are typically all done with loops, um, but it's still, you know, important. Okay, so we have had somebody that appears to have been paying good attention in the ULLI game. All right, so we have a, an unordered list with our list item, but I'm seeing a lot of stuff going on over here. Oh, yeah, this is, this is probably WooCommerce, right? It throws all these classes up in here. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit hard because, yeah, you're, it's going to be tough to figure out. And I'm not a WooCommerce person, so I don't know what's thrown in here by default versus what they put in here themselves. That's going to be a little bit tough to look at. We can choose maybe something else here. Um, mm -hmm, how about our testimonials? All right. Okay, I'm seeing, what am I seeing right off the bat? I'm seeing utility classes. All right, there's an image there. There's our review stars. There's our div, which what's inside of there. Okay, so, so this is not a div. This is a paragraph. All right, so this has to be a paragraph tag instead of a div tag. What do we got going on down here? Oh, look at this. Uh, row space between, padding M. So this is all based, this is all built primarily with either styling at the ID level, it looks like. Let's go back and see if we can find any. Where's the parent? There we go. Here's the parent. C card transparent. Okay. Div, div, div. <laughs> C card transparent. I don't know what framework this is. So I don't know if that's a utility class or if that's some sort of custom class. It seems like 
that's a custom class of C card transparent because it's got a bunch of stuff going on here. Um, but yeah, it looks like all these are just built with utility, utility classes. C center. I'm trying to figure out where the colors and stuff are coming from though. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Let's keep looking. Let me pull this up. Oh, nope. This one. Okay. Ah, oh, right here. Yeah, so it's part of that C card transparent class. Is that a transparent color? I guess it is. Yeah, I guess it is. Does it need to be transparent? I don't know if it needs to be transparent. Um, but let's see. Text, yeah. So we're using a custom class kind of like on the main card, but then everything else just uses utility classes. C heading light, C text dim. Um, so not really very maintainable here. Let's see how many reviews there are. Oh, hey, look at this. We found videos. Why are these so buried? Why are they hidden? Why are you hiding your best content? Got a lot. This is a review plugin here. We can't really analyze this. This is just uh, generated by a review plugin. I can tell. Um, let's see. I don't know if I want to play these or not. Let me drop the music down. Hi everyone, I have here the Cali Capelli Pro Hair Straightener and this I don't want to blast you guys out of the room. So I'm going to be unboxing it and demoing it a bit for you. And it also comes with this little bag as well and inside it comes with a comb and some clips, which is a great little All right, let's do this one cuz this is like a featured a featured one. Okay guys, I'm so excited to do this unboxing with y'all. I purposely did not do my hair. Brush, iron down. We're just going to take a minute to grade the video of like, how, does this, uh, does this help sell the product or not help sell the product? That's all we're going to do. It's a very short video. So just stick with me here. It's a really cute color. Let's open this. Again, I'm watching this as somebody who I don't curl my hair, but I do. I may buy this as a gift. Put me in that position. I may buy this as a gift. Okay. Big box. What do you guys think? So this is their Pro One Inch Straightener Gold Edition. So excited to open this thing up and check it out. They have the cutest colors. It says that the floating plates auto adjust your hair thickness and tie. All right, so what I'm gathering is this is not the company selling it. This is just a, um, this is like an influencer. This is a, like an influencer they've given the product to. They're doing an unboxing. They're telling us about the product. Adjustable temperature technology reduces static and frizz. Sleek, ergonomic, soft touch grip in a gorgeous array of colors. They do have a lot of cute colors. They have like purple and black and leopard and the mint green scrunchies. Doesn't leave a ponytail crease, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use, and the straighteners doing that really nicely. I just kind of quickly went through my whole head and straight she's showing the the product uh, i don't really have to watch any further uh, this video is and and this is a you know if if i was giving the hair curlers to influencers um you know i i would ask them to maybe approach this a specific way i don't know if they just gave it and was like hey do an unboxing and talk about it the thing is, is if you want it to be a really good sales tool, the best sales tool is somebody, you, you look at me using WS Forms or something, right? I know the product because I use the product and I'm genuinely excited about the product. And then I show doing something with WS Forms and I'm excited while I'm doing it and I obviously know what I'm doing. I've done it before. And when you hear it, you're like, Guys, I see the value. I see the excitement. I see, like, I get it. This And this guy, you know, he, he, he loves this product. I should probably look into it. If you give somebody a product and they're unboxing it going, well, it says that, you know, this and this, and they're just reading the box, the th same thing you can read. And it's clear that they maybe have never used this hair curler ever in their life, but they're like, hey, the colors are cool, which again is not, you know, the best selling point. It may be a selling point to somebody, but it's not the best selling point. 
Uh, so there's not any like, oh my God, she knows this is the best hair curler because she's tried them all. And the last three of them set her hair on fire, but this one didn't because this one's amazing and she trusts it and she's been using it for months now. And like that's the kind of thing you want to hear. The, hey, let me open the box and read what everybody else can read. And I've never done this before, but I'm going to see if it makes my hair straight because it's a hair straightener. Okay, it's another hair straightener, but it's got cool colors. That's not a sales pitch, right? That's, that's not really helping anybody want to buy the product. So how we get these in the hands of like, you know, influencers or whatever, and you know, how they talk about it is very important. And if you look at major brands, they tightly control you know, either the influencer they choose, okay? I'm a photographer, right? So there's a bunch of influencers who review cameras, cameras. And I know Canon, Canon, Nikon, they send cameras to these, to these influencers and they don't tell the influencer exactly how to talk about the product because they handpick that influencer for a reason based on other product reviews that they've done. And they know this person's gonna do it the way we want to anyway, and, and it's going to be done in the best way possible. So they handpick that person. Now, if you're doing, that's, that's millions of followers that these influencers have. If it's a lower level influencer and they're like, they don't really, they're not excellent, you know, amazing at creating content, then you might have to go the extra step of saying, hey, we want you to take a look at it this way. We want you to, in fact, do this, right? We want you to use it for three months before you do your video. That could be the only stipul stipulation. That immediately adds way more credibility. It's like, hey, don't just unbox it and use it and, and then give your first take. Use it for three months and then do your video. That's the only thing we ask of you. And now at least when she comes on to do the video, it's like, I've been using this for the last three months. And if she has something really, really, really good to say about it, there's way more credibility behind what she has to say now versus, hey, I just unboxed it two seconds ago. I read the same thing on the box that y'all are gonna read and now I'm gonna see if it straightens my hair. Oh, look, it does. And it's got leopard's print. Go buy it, right? Like that's not, there's no reason why I should buy that one versus the other gazillion that are out there, right? We're not gonna watch all these videos, but here's the thing that I will say uh, in, in general, okay? If we had to sum up all of the, all of the critique and then we're gonna move on to our next site. You've got a really good, uh, the product itself looks good. Okay. So this looks like a good product. Um, you have a good opportunity here. If there are truly unique benefits to your product in particular, if there are not any unique, if you went to Alibaba, maybe this thing is on Alibaba. Okay. I go to Alibaba. Maybe I find this in 10 minutes. If that's the case, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't build products like that. I don't sell products like that. I don't like, I have no interest in finding a product that anybody can find and then, you know, trying to market it and sell it and all of that. So I'm always looking for something unique. Like why is this uniquely valuable? Why are you going through all the trouble to sell this? Well, it must be uniquely valuable. That's kind of the take that I have, right? So if there's nothing uniquely valuable, then I don't know. I would say, go get a different hobby. If there's something uniquely valuable about this, then your mission is to communicate that. You need to communicate it better with these hotspots. You need to communicate it better with your videos. But you have, if you have a uniquely valuable product and it is a good looking product, you have a lot of opportunity here. It's just a matter of making some tweaks and adjustments. So get very clear on what is uniquely valuable about this product. Let's work on communicating that. Remove everything that is a distraction to that. Don't worry about, hey, I gotta fill out my e-commerce template. I gotta make it look like a legit e-commerce store. You don't have to. I can sell this hair curler with one page. That's it. I need one page and I'm selling lots of these hair curlers. If there's something uniquely valuable about it, I don't need any other part of this website. Give me one page and a video camera, and we're gonna sell a lot of these hair curlers. That's all you need. But we took, this This site took the approach of, well, we gotta make it look like an e-commerce site. Maybe if it doesn't look like an e-commerce site, nobody's gonna buy anything. No, that's not true, that's not true, 100% not true. Give me one page and a video camera, we're selling a lot of these hair curlers, okay? Colors are good. Somebody mentioned colors, I, I like the colors. I think the target market you are selling to, probably these colors, this color scheme appeals to them. So I didn't have any problems with the with the colors. I don't have any problem with really the the branding. I mean, 
you have one product under a brand umbrella. Maybe in the future, you're like, well, I'm going to have a lot of products eventually in the hair care space. That would make more sense uh, to do it this way. But I didn't really have a problem with any of that. And I mean, the Dom stuff is, is really being picky because I really look at the Dom after we have a legit product that we're really, you know, doing a good job of selling and there's a unique value proposition and all. Then the Dom really matters, right? If we can't sell the product, then the Dom doesn't matter either. Um, so this all just comes down to why is this unique? How do we communicate that? Let's get rid of all the other distractions and let's go sell some stuff. Um, that's the main missing piece right here. So your approach in general, you know, we talk about like the uh, the hero background image mistakes and all of that. I mean, that 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 kind of stuff's gonna happen. Um, right now, I wouldn't even worry about any of that stuff. You have to go back to the drawing board with your copy and your your content. And then then you are going to, assuming you have some unique unique value in this product then probably you're going to start getting some, some initial results. Uh, and I would like to know, you know, what are your results? You can always message me behind the scenes and just let me know, hey, are you selling zero? Are you selling one um, flat iron curler a week? Are you selling a thousand a week? I don't know. Uh, you can always let me know behind the scenes. But that is my review of calicapelli.com. All right, what are you guys thinking in the uh, chat here? Let's take a look. I swear I've seen this. Okay. Yeah. All right. But they uh, never know. She really used it during these three months. That's true. Um, she's, you know, Sylvia says we can never know if she really used it during these three months. I think you can get a gist. You know, when you hear the person talk, you can kind of get the gist of like, mm, did they, I mean, they really use this. I don't know. Um, I, I but a hundred percent when they're like, let me see what's good about this. And then they just read the box. Like, oh, okay, we know, like you just saw this box eight seconds ago. Um, yeah, that, that makes it clear that you don't, you haven't really used the product. The homepage has seven H one tags. I prefer to just use one. Let me elevate this up so everybody can see it. I prefer to use just one on every page, but Google stated that it is not harmful to have multiple H ones. What's your take on it? Uh, I think it's pretty objective at this point. There was a period of time where a lot of people argued that, hey, you can have multiple H1 tags per page. Uh, there was a time where I believe, you know, Google talked about, hey, you know, we can parse the content and we can still figure it out and it's not really going to harm you. And maybe even in the documentation, uh, people argued for H1s per section and yada, yada, yada. But I think objectively now it's, it's, fairly clear. The rule is one H1 per page. That's the main topic of the page. Um, I think in SEO, this is good. This is best for accessibility for sure. Really, it's a big accessibility thing. So if you look at Ally, right, their, their, um, their standard is one H1 per page. And because people with screen readers, it's hard to figure out the main topic, right? So it's easy when there's one H1 and then the section headings are H2s and then like the card headings are H3s and everything is a nice logical order. That's better for accessibility. I think it's better across the board to keep that standard. So I am a big fan of one H1 per page. Which plugin do you suggest alternative to WooCommerce? I mean, sometimes you got to use WooCommerce, right? Uh, and if you're in a situation where you have to use WooCommerce, then that's it's what you got. There's not a lot of competition out there. I was hoping for, what is that? What's that other product coming along? Uh, I bought the LTD for it to like support the initial development, but what is it? I, somebody's, somebody here is going to, going to mention the name. I, and the reason I don't know the name is because they're terrible at marketing. They're terrible at communication. They're terrible at timelines. They're terrible at getting a, uh, you know, like a initial product out for people to use. And then I, I don't know, it just seems like it's been, I, I think I paid for the LTD like 18 months ago and I still don't even know what the status is of this thing. So it's just, they need a new team. Somebody, no, it's not Surecart. No, Surecart is legit. Surecart is good. I, I'm actually using Surecart on Geary.co. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Surecart. Uh, North Commerce. Thank you. There it is. Justin said North Commerce. Uh, yeah, it's North Commerce. They've got, they've got major 
communication slash strategy issues if I were to uh, throw my opinion out there. So North Commerce, hopefully it's, you know, in the next 10 years uh, is maybe a viable uh, alternative to WooCommerce. I think Surecart eventually may be. Surecart is mainly like a Thrivecart type replacement right now. Uh, but I think they're moving to maybe compete with WooCommerce. Okay. Um, Surecart is the best. Surecart, Surecart, Surecart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So D123 says, just ask for my refund from North Commerce. I think they had developer issues. They had to switch development teams. and like, But no, it should not be. Here's the number one problem that, that North Commerce has. I think they're trying to build a WooCommerce. It's like a classic thing. It's like we have this monster task, which is building in this giant e-commerce platform. And instead of building it in usable pieces, they're like, no, we're just going to tackle the whole thing. We're just going to tackle the whole thing all at once. And then you never hear from them for like, you know, years on end. And then I, they think, I guess they're going to show up out of the blue and just get everybody to kind of buy in. And it's just not a good approach. Um, yeah, Amanda says, I haven't even heard of North Commerce. Physical products with Surecart in a few months, apparently. That would be good. Can you in the future show bricks and jet engine integration? Hearing a lot of good things about jet engine and they offer a lot in it. I can't do that because I've never used jet engine in my life. Uh, if I did or had any experience with it, I would do a video on it, but I have not used jet engine. So I've had no reason to use jet engine. It's just not a thing that I have a lot of experience with. Okay, let's go to site number two. All right, we're going to bring in, this is our agency slash, remember, we only do one agency slash freelancer site per episode. This is going to be it. And so we've got Kel. This is going to be a, uh, this, we've never done a freelancer one before, at least to my knowledge. Like everybody has been presented as an agency. And this is really being presented as a, you know, here I am. I'm the guy. I'm your guy. Uh, one guy. And you can hire me. So we've got Chell Ocha, Ocha Gabia. Is that how we do it? Ocha Gabia? Is that, per, is that correct? All right. Callie Capelli is here. She's here. She says, super valuable info. Thank you, Kevin. We'll work on all points you mentioned. Absolutely. Best of luck to you, for sure. The, um, you know, building brands and selling products on the internet is not a easy task. Not an easy task. All right. Kel. It's not just a website. It's a tool for your business. Let's stop there. Um, are you talking about you? Or are you about to sell me a product? Because this, and this is not translated, I don't think. There is not, no, this is in English. As far as I can tell. I don't think it auto-translated without asking me. So I think, I think this is all in English. Um, it's not just a website. It's a tool for your business. I don't know. I don't know about this headline. Let's continue reading. One of the factors contributing to the success of the businesses I've worked with is their strong brand recognition, solid online presence, and niche authority. Their website is one of the many ways they express this sentiment. It's a little bit academic. I sit down with business owners to discuss their current business situation, the problems they face, the things they want to improve or accomplish, and then I determine how I can use a website to solve those problems or improve what they already have while adding as much value as possible. So you are a um, consultant, but also a web designer slash developer, whatever. And we're going to have to come back and revisit this copy because this can be done a bit better here. What's your freebie? I compiled a list of things that businesses I've worked with do to improve their online presence and attract more clients. The problem with this right off the bat is that you're not really calling anybody out specifically, right? It's like the businesses I've worked with. Well, who are they? What do they look like? Am I that kind of person? Am I that kind of business? Do I fit in your bucket? I don't really know yet. So I've read a lot of words and I don't know what kind of business would be good for hiring you. Is it an eight-figure business, seven-figure business, six-figure business, a startup, a service-based business, an e-commerce business? So what kind of business do you work with? All right, so um, download the Digital Presence Matters to learn tried and true methods for growing successful businesses' brands that you can apply to your own. That's a little hard to read. 
We can make this read a little bit better. Um, digital presence matters. The ultimate list of what businesses can do to improve their online presence. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, there's just not a lot of specifics going on here. Okay. And maybe this is why. These are the platforms I use to create the websites that helped my clients. WordPress, Shopify, two very, very different platforms. ClickFunnels, a third very, very different platform. Kartra, Samcart, Leadpages, a very, very different platform. Unbounce, Kajabi, Zapier, Axe. Okay, now we're getting into email marketing. Elementor, Bricks, two very, very different builders. Oxygen thrown in there. Um, WS Form, Ajax, load more. Okay. So the vibe I'm getting from this grid is like, I can do it all. I can just do everything. I'll just do everything, any builder, any whatever, just throw it at me. I got, I got solutions, solutions, right? Uh, imagine what would happen if your website, this is a, this, this would be interesting. Let's take a look at this. Um, I, I like the design of this little section, but I don't, I'm not sure these stock images are a little, um, hmm, they don't really connect. They don't really hit. Imagine what would happen if your website makes you look more professional. 84% of modern consumers believe that a business with a website is more credible than those with only social media profiles. The thing with this is I like the approach of like, I like the bullets. I like the scannable nature. I like the stats. I like, this is checking boxes. It's checking copywriting boxes. What doesn't check the box is kind of how you're alluding to what you do. Let me go back up here and I'll, and I'll try to connect the dots here. Strong brand, X, solid online president. Their, their website is one of the many ways they express the sentiment. I sit down with business owners, discuss their current business, the problems they face, the things they want to improve or accomplish. And then I determine how I can use a website to solve these problems or improve what they already have. Use a website. It's almost like I would say that if the person didn't have a website, right? So it's like, hey, if, if you, let's say I'm a LinkedIn expert and I'm like, I would sit down and figure out how LinkedIn can help you double your revenue or whatever. That's because I assume you're not using LinkedIn. All right. And, or if I was a TikTok expert, I was like, I, you know, what I do is I come into brands and businesses and we put together a strategy for how we can take TikTok by storm in, in, in their industry. That's because they're not using TikTok. Okay. But everybody has a website. Everybody has a website. So when you talk about how I can use a website to solve your problem, they're like, but I have a website. We already do that. We already do that. So what are you going to do differently? That's really what matters is what are you going to do differently with the website? So don't talk about just having a website. Um, and then we talked about it again here. And then we come down here and it says a business with a website is more credible, but they already feel like they checked that box. They're like, I already have a website, so I'm already more credible. So what are you going to do differently? That's what we're not talking about. Attracts new customers simply by its presence. Make your business searchable and prominent on Google's first page. They probably already think their website is searchable. They think their website is prominent. A lot of, by the way, a lot of businesses think their website is prominent because they go in and they Google something very obvious to their brand or their uh, whatever, and their website pops up. And they're like, hey, look at that. We're already number one. They don't realize that nobody searches for that term. It has zero volume or zero relevance. They just think because they typed it in and they came up like in the top three that they're ranking really well on Google. Um, so, you know, th that's, that's not necessarily going to hit display high quality photography on your website to show prospective clients. Are you a photographer now? This is an excellent method for establishing social proof for your products or services and work ethic, uh, displays your finest testimonials and reviews. What if I'm already displaying my reviews? Motivates clients to contact you, provide easy access to your contact information. What if my website already does that? You got to scrap this whole section. You're basically taking basic website things, just check a basic box and then saying, hey, I'm the consultant that's going to come in and make sure these check these boxes are checked for you. You've got to bring more than that to the table. You got to bring something they haven't heard of before. You got to bring something they're not already doing to the table if you're going to use this kind of uh, sales approach, right? All right, let's keep going down here. Get all of these benefits without spending a fortune. Digital marketing world has formidably revolutionized at large. Has form okay. Mm. 
that needs a little bit of uh, a little bit of grammar stuff going on there. With a con- with a continuous race to win the world market, businesses are up to their mark. I feel like was this written by this feels a little Chat GPT ish to me. Um, is, I don't know. Chat GPT would actually probably write this a little bit better. Uh, in this colossal competition, enterprises that. What it actually may be is maybe English isn't your first language, and so you're doing your best to write in a uh, kind of a compelling way, but it's coming across a little bit. It's not connecting very well, and there's a lot of like terms we wouldn't use very often, like colossal competition, things like that. Um, so, I, I yeah, I would say a little bit, you know, work on the writing here. Um, so you, there's an about you section. I mean, I like the images and I like this background, you know, going on here. It's very exciting. There's a lot going on. It's, it's good. Uh, I like your big K. I really like your brand overall, you know, what you've got going on with your logo and stuff. I think the colors here are good. I, I like this, you know, kind of swoop is different. Um, in general, like if we talk about UI UX, I think it's all, uh, you know, fairly good here. Uh, some of the wonderful clients with whom I've collaborated. So you've been with the man Dan Locke, have you? Let's see. Uh, what did you do for Dan Locke? Let's learn more. Personal brand website. Mm, did you build Dan Locke's website? Roll front end sales funnel integration, WordPress elements or click funnels design. Okay. All right. Is that you? All right. All right. Good stuff. Let's go back. Let's go down here. I don't know who Patrick Combs is. My fault if I'm supposed to. But these are good. Like as a portfolio, now we're now we're talking. I don't know. You should have just led with this kind of stuff. We didn't need all the other stuff. In fact, like if you've actually done, if you did Dan Locke's website, I mean, I don't have any reason to doubt you other than going to danlock.com or whatever his website is, danlockshop.com. This appears to be it, right? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Hey, quit scrolling. Let's go down here. Dan uh, doesn't have the, uh, now this is, no, this is different. Unless it's changed since then, I don't know. Let's go down, 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 down. Yeah, there's no buy, okay. Well, We'll just have to take your word for it. But if you've done uh, these kind of sites before, well, first of all, this is a niche in itself, right? You've got a coach. You've got, dang it, go back. You've got a coach. I didn't realize that image is clickable too. Uh, You've got a coach. You've got a coach or speaker, author, comedic entertainer. Okay, so like author, coach, another you know, influencer type personality, marker, marketer, copywriter, entrepreneur, um, another entrepreneur, single one. This is your niche, my friend. This is what you're doing. So let's try to connect this now. These are people you serve. This is the type of person slash company, business, whatever you want to build a website for. Now let's go back to the top. Why did it take me Section number one, section number two, section number three, section number four, section number five, section number six. It took me to section number six to figure out who you who you serve, who you work with, who you want to target. That needs to be all up here. You're talking in very generic language all throughout all of these sections. And then we get down here and you're like, oh, that's who you specialize in working with. These kinds of people, this kind of website. That should have all been talked about way up top, way in the beginning. What's your most recent projects? Okay, let's take a look at this portfolio here. I'm not liking these cards. They don't uh, they don't give a good glimpse. Hold on here. Let me just click on this one. Hmm. All right, let me go back. Let's do Ken Lloyd. Who's this guy? I don't know. There's something about these designs that aren't jiving with what I just saw on the front page. I don't know if anybody else is getting this vibe. Is anybody else getting this vibe that this, whoever designed this, 
did not design this. Get it? Right? So we got a little disconnect going on here. I don't know. I don't know. I need thoughts. I need thoughts in the chat. Guarantee whoever designed that and that didn't design most of the stuff that's in this other portfolio. I'm not making any claims. Okay, I'm not making any claims. I'm just saying this just feels, feels like there's a little disconnect there. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Is this a video? Talk about Kel. Oh. All right, let's see this one. Oh. Oh. Hey, do you guys see that? I can't play the video if it's in the right slide. So if it's in the right slide and I click play, it it slides the next slide and then I can play it. You made it. I'm Ryan. Uh, you made it to Kel's website or perhaps this is an ad. Not sure where he's going to use the vid. All right. Oh, sometimes I can't even play him at all. It just slides right past it. So Kel, my man, you got to you gotta uh, work the slider out a little bit better. Yeah, I can't I can't play that. I was going to see if, if if Dan Locke was down here talking about Kel. That's what you need. You need if if you work for Dan Locke, you need a Dan Locke video. Um all right, does your business afford does your business afford to not to have a website? Okay, rewrite that. Your customers are and and again, here's the thing, Kel, it, they have a website. I'm almost positive they have a website. So this is not the the angle to take, right? If they have a website, this is not speaking to them. All right, let's check out the blog. What are we doing? Are we doing anything? Oh, we don't have a blog. There's a there is a blog link, but there is no blog. All right, let's see the work with me page. Okay. The thing is, is like all these stock images aren't really going to do a lot to connect with people. You know, agencies have this kind of issue all the time. This is better, right? You created some custom graphic with uh, your your actual work and stuff. That That's the kind of stuff you need to be doing. This for sure, 100% get rid of that. Clip art, immediate trash can. Any website that tries to use it, just immediate trash can on clip art. <laughs> and I get it. That's not necessary. Okay. It's basically, it's more or less clip art. It's a, it's an illustration. It's, it's very clip arty uh, of an illustration. All right. Um, let's show me your Dom. What, what do we use to build this, by the way? Uh, oxygen. Okay. So we can take a look at, let's go, let's do a quick show me your Dom here on some sort of global element like these cards. And let's go over here a little bit. All right. So it's a div. Oh, here we go again. Utility, 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 utility. But it's also got client's card. So we repeat the same thing over and over and over again in Web Design for Dummies. If you're going to use a custom class, go all in on the custom class. All styling applies to the custom class. There's no sense in using a custom class and then also littering it with utility classes. Then we click on this. That is the scrolling image. We click on this, which is the container for that content. We do have an H3, but as you see in the DOM, the big image comes first. So really this needs to be uh, first there. And then you can make this visually come first with a uh, little order minus one, okay? So now we have the same layout that we had before, but at least my heading now comes first in my card, which is correct. There's my H3 is the first item. You need to lose the link on the image itself. You have a learn more button right here. We don't need two links that go to the same place. So drop the link on the image. And then we look at the description, which is not a div. This is a paragraph. So we've got to change that to a P tag. And then this learn more needs uh, anchor text. It needs to not say learn more. It needs to say view Dan or it's um, like... Dan Locke um, case study. Bam. 
just like that. Or Dan, Dan Locke, and that's actually, sorry, not how you spell Dan Locke. Dan Locke website case study. That's what you needed to say right there. All right, and then you would do that all the way down. And if you had used a custom class to, to build all of these, you could do this order flip and all of that it would be very easy to do, but you've used a lot of utility classes here, so you may run into some issues with that. Um, all right. That was a little bit of a show me your DOM moment. All right, let's go, let's go check out our comments here. Projects range over many years. Okay. To be honest, I'm losing trust the longer we browse the website. There's a lot of inconsistencies in the branding and website. I really do not like stock images when you are talking about yourself. There should be a video of yourself. Yes, that is a good, good call. Quite strange website, to be honest. Looks like Kel is working with design agencies. There you go. That would make sense. So if you're being hired by the agencies that work for these people, how you present this is, is kind of important, right? So you're kind of positioning as, hey, I'm a consultant. People hire me to solve problems with their website. We get the gist that you, when you put Dan Locke on here and you put, um, and you know, in all fairness, I didn't read this, okay? Uh, no, you're just talking about Dan Locke. Okay, so you 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 put personal brand website right here, role front end. So when you say, hey, we did a personal brand website, my role was front end, you're kind of alluding to, you know, you maybe you built it. Maybe you didn't design it, but you built it. Is that what give us more context here of what's going on? I think a lot of a lot of people would make the mistake of just thinking that you built Dan Locke's website. Like, hey, you designed it, you built it, or your team designed it, or people you work with, whatever. Um, we need to know the exact role that you played and cause if you're going to call out somebody like Dan Locke as a client, then hundred percent, we need more clarity on exactly what you did for Dan Locke. It'd be like if, um, if a big agency was working on Tony Robbins website. Okay. Let's just imagine for a minute. I'm, you know, I don't care about Tony Robbins one way or the other, but this is the first person that popped into my mind of somebody that's a gigantic influence or whatever. And so he hires this agency, probably pays an agency, you know, 80 grand for a, a, a great website for all the stuff that he does, all his events and all this other stuff, right? We're talking 80, hundred grand, probably some sort of investment like that, that he would make in his website. And he hires a big agency to do this. And they end up hiring me, a free, let's just say I'm a freelancer. They end up hiring me. Well, I can't just run over to my portfolio and slap in Tony Robbins' website, Right. It depends on what I did. Did I build the whole thing? Maybe then I can put that in and say, hey, I developed Tony Robbins' website. Uh, but I can't just, you know, if I just did a piece of it or I helped with the front end of it, I can't just go throw Tony Robbins' website into my portfolio and act like I designed and built the whole thing. Um, so just give people more context and clarity here. All right. Uh, overall, overall, um, Branding is good. I, I'm, you know, the colors is fine. I will say this, my man, uh, just, uh, just get a suit. You got to get a suit that fits right here. This is not a, a suit that fits. So we can improve these. I, I like the fact that you're there. Okay. Like I like your photo, photo there, photo here, photo down here. This is good. You just got to button up some things. Just tight, tighten up a little bit right here. Um, because that, you know, it's not, and that's not me nitpicking. That's literally, you know, credibility, right? So Dan Locke is not going to be in a, in a suit that's um, one size too big, right? He's going to be in a, in a tightened up suit. Right? It's professionalism. It's, it's um, you know, just giving off a, hey, we already are wondering, can I trust Kel? Can I trust Kel? Well, you know, I, I have a harder time trusting somebody in an oversized suit. Just saying if it was a proper fit, they're looking professional, sleek, all that. Okay, now, now we have an extra trust factor. Make sense? So tighten those kinds of things up. Uh, notice our call to action color, you know, does a good job of really standing out on the page. So we're doing a lot of things right. We've got some final tweaks and adjustments to make. 
a little bit to our visual presentation of our personal self, but then our copy, the biggest thing I could say, biggest thing, 100% biggest thing is replace all this generic copy, start really talking more about the kinds of people you want to work with and why you specialize in helping them and why you're better to hire than XYZ agency or, you know, some other consultant. Just got to sell, sell yourself a little bit better. It's a little too generic right now. And then just clear up this, you know, what were your precise roles on these projects? You don't have to act like you did the whole thing to gain credibility. You know, the fact that you got to work on Dan Locke's website, if you did a real, if you, you know, developed a really solid, maybe a sales page or what, just tell us that it's fine. Tell us that. All right, let's hop into the chat here. They've already rebuilt the website. That's what book publishers do. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I, you're talking about a different website. Got it. What's up with the projects page when you filter on HTML, CSS, recent projects, HTML, CSS filter. Were you seeing something different? Oh, oh. Womp womp. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, there's a little, got a little issue there, don't we? Mm, yeah, we need, we would need to do some inspecting there, but I'm also getting this of like, is this generated by a plugin or something? Yeah, it looks like, look, it's a short code. This is some sort of portfolio, like pop in. They just drop this into the page. Maybe this is a, uh, this is a WP grid builder short code. Those don't know. Those aren't WP Grid Builder cards, unless you, unless you did a lot of something to them. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. It's a uh, you've got a portfolio malfunction. All right, let's jump in here. Should we? It's twelve thirty. Should we cram one more in real quick, or should we call it a day? Or how about this? Let's just finish with Q and A. If you have any Q&A or you want to see if there's any little mini tutorial, hey, how do I do this in bricks? Uh, how do I do whatever? We can jump in and, and do that. Let me scroll back through the chat. Feels like a template, Ruben says. Could be templates, could be templates. Uh, oh, let me go up. Let me Let's go top down. It's always best. Let me get a sip too. Here's a question about the other site. Would you use the image of the woman with flowing hair as the hero with a headline addressing the final hair transformation gained from using the product? It's a good question. Um, so the, I, I wish I could pull up the uh, website again easily. I closed my, my spreadsheet. So she talked about thick, curly hair or whatever. I I would want to show, I don't think that that image, if I remember properly, seemed like, that seemed like a person with just, you know, normal hair. I don't know. Um, I would show somebody with thick, curly hair in the process of straightening it. You know, the straightener is like halfway through it. And so you see this like thick, curly hair, but that part coming out of the straightener is just like straight as an arrow or like, you know, whatever it's supposed to look like. I don't know. But that's what you, you're showing an image that's like in the process of using the product and you get to see the before and after almost in the same shot. That's kind of what I would imagine for the hero. Thanks. Great review on e-commerce websites. Asif says, hey, Kevin, love your tutorials. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, let's scroll, 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 scroll. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Reading, reading, reading. Some good comments, some good discussion here. Can you paste the link? I cannot see. Oh, that was to, to somebody else. Broken blog too. Yep, we found that. Somebody says tutorial in all caps. All right, but you got to tell me what. <laughs> you got to ask a question. Uh, when working with HIPAA, 
What form builder do you use? Um, I avoid HIPAA websites like the plague. I just, yeah, I really, I don't want to deal with HIPAA if I don't have to at all. And if I have to deal with HIPAA, you're getting charged like five times as much. Um, there's a couple out there. It depends on, you know, what the form is for. And it also depends on who's going to have access to the form. There's like some other follow-up questions I guess I would have. Would you be able to do the popovers using ACSS? Um, no. The uh, God, I wish I could go back to the, here, I, I can do it over here. Let's go back to that website for just a minute. Because I, I do want to talk about that for one second. That popover thing needs to be discussed. Let me, let me, let me grab that website URL. Uh, here it is. CaliCapelli.com. Okay. Let's open that up. Bring it back. Bring it back to life. Okay. Uh, so these are not just to be clear. The, yeah, these are popovers. These are not tooltips and you should not do this with a tooltip. Okay. So I think the question was asked because we're about to release tooltips for automatic CSS. Uh, accessible tooltips for automatic CSS, CSS only accessible tooltips for automatic CSS. So no JavaScript, none of that. Um, this is not a use case for a tooltip type functionality. And the reason is tooltips technically cannot have interactive elements inside of them. So you see this back next, uh, maybe there would be like an image in here, uh, maybe an extra link in here for additional context to take you somewhere. If any of that is happening, it's not a tooltip any longer. A tooltip, and, and a tooltip is really almost like a progressive enhancement. Uh, you should not put really valuable content inside of a tooltip. Um, so this is just not a tooltip situation at all. Now, I was going to see if this was accessible. Notice that I can, I can keyboard navigate to it, but it does fail accessibility, and I'll tell you why. Because you can see which one I'm targeting, right? You guys see that? See which ones I'm going to? But accessibility standards basically say you cannot only use color. Color cannot be the only thing that determines what I am focusing on at the moment. And the only thing determining focus right now is color. And so for a colorblind user, that gives, they don't know. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, so you need something else. Now it's got this little uh, pulse animation. So... If that was only on the thing that was being focused, that might do the trick, right? But it's on all of them, so that doesn't count. So we need some sort of like a an, ex, uh, uh, an outline. An outline would work here. Um, you could make it bigger. You could uh, translate it a little bit to left or right, up, down, whatever. I don't. There's a lot of things you could do, but it's gotta be something other than color. Now, can I trigger with the keyboard? The answer is yes. Can I navigate between them with the keyboard? The answer is kind of, yes. Okay, so that looks like it was the last one. Let me go backwards, all right? So I'm able to do that. I'm able to do that. The next question, oh, oh, now I'm out of it. Okay, all right, now I'm back in it. So there's an accessibility fail. Any type of uh, pop-up like that or pop-over or whatever you wanna call it, you should not be able to the, the focus should not be able to leave it. It's, it's supposed to trap focus so that I can't, I have to either close it or I have to use one of the buttons inside of it. And this one allows me to leave it. See, I can keep going down the page and now like a screen reader user does not know they're no longer in the pop-up, right? They're just randomly on some other part of the page. So that would fail accessibility. And then I'm also trying to close it with escape and I'm failing to close it with escape. In fact, I cannot close that pop-up with my keyboard. I Now, if I if I only had a keyboard disposable to me, I, I can't get rid of that pop-over. So there's, it's like, you know, semi-accessible. There's, I'm surprised that you can, you know, navigate them with the keyboard, that's good, that you can open them, that's good, that they have next and previous arrows, but there's a few things that it fails on. So that can be improved as well. Uh, I think that's what you were asking. If you were asking something else, go ahead and, and clarify, and I'll, I will try to uh, try to answer again. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, and here was the here was the hair right here. Yeah, no, she. This is actually a um, an anti sales image, I would say, in in a way. I don't know because well, we didn't see what her hair looked like before, but a lot of people are going to be like, well, she just has perfect hair, and if that's kind of the vibe that they get, then it's not really going to help you sell your product, right? Um. So. Yeah, I, I would show somebody with really maybe hard to work with hair, whatever that looks like. And then again, it's like the the hair straightener in the process of straightening the hair. We can see the hair. We can see it in action. That's kind of the thing I would I would go for. Uh, if you had two pictures of this girl, one before and one after, and it was lit like this, I get I feel like this is a stock image. Uh, so obviously you can't do this. But if you could find somebody with hard to work with hair, sit them down, great lighting like this, bam, there's a before. We use the hair straightener, bam, there's an after, put them side by side. Hey, now we're talking. Now we're now we're marketing, okay? All right, let's see. It's not the suit. His head looks bigger than normal in the header photo. No, I'm pretty sure it's the suit. Because no suit comes like the here, you know, on your hands. And it is a little baggy looking. Um, which tool for multi-language does work good with bricks? I don't know. I don't, I don't do a lot of multilingual websites. Do you have any extra tips on the design process for websites you create, like starting with frames and designing? I don't. Uh, the only thing I can say about the design process, other than, you know, my site, I did it differently than I do for clients. Um, I'm, just, I'm just winging it and doing what I want to do because it's my site. But... My process for clients is I build the website with frames and then I get client approval and then I send the website off to the designer and then they send the design back. They do that in Figma for the most part. Um, so I get I get a mock-up, a high fidelity mock-up back in Figma and then I just go back into frames and, I, and we design it according to that mock-up. That's the process. Uh, let's see. Uh, photography for SEO purposes, I would highly recommend Polylang as far as automatic translation. Yeah, I think we've used Polylang on like one website. I, I, you know, I didn't actually implement it. Somebody on the team implemented it. I don't think we had any issues with it. So I can't really speak to translation plugins all that much because I just, ha I don't have a lot of experience with them. And when I do use them, I, it tends to be somebody on our team doing it, not like me doing it. Because I, I just, I have no interest in translation. Um, there's a lot of things I just have no interest in, and and you know, I find somebody else to to fulfill that. All right, so that's it for today, guys. We're gonna call this, put this in the books. I hope you found a lot of value here. Um, I'm excited about this website right here, CaliCapelli.com. I'm excited to see. What changes? Maybe she comes back in a month and uh, or two months, three months. I don't know. It's gonna take a while. It's it's uh you know this kind of work is hard to do. But come back in six months, maybe twelve months, and let us know where you're at and how things are going. I would love uh, love an update on that kind of thing. All right, guys. Last call for down in the description. If you want your website or a website critiqued on the next version of Web Design for Dummies, we have a link to the new form. It is a new form, and I cleared out all of the old ones. So you can only get in now by going through the new form and uh, maybe your, your site will be selected next week. For all of you who showed up, thank you for showing up. We got a good showing today. We'll be back next week with more value and uh, yeah, got some ACSS updates coming soon that are very, ooh, this next round of ACSS updates is gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice. Um, and then we got a lot of new frames that have been getting released lately. So make sure you check those out. And I can tell you that the next component Coming to frames is a carousel slash slider. It is in beta right now. I don't. It hasn't been released publicly in beta, but it's an internal or internal beta process. Uh, that's going to be a really, really huge addition to frames. Peace. Love you guys.